Um, I'm sorry, Jerry, what line we have to get? Uh, line. Amit. Amit. Um, Amit. The last one, line three. I'm going to say this again when they come, okay. but I'll tell you this now. Um, this is a new letter tonight, but it's going to do two things. Uh, one, it's just going to be another letter to be used lots of different ways. Guys, uh, can you tell me a letter in English that's a word? A. 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 Turtles crossing the road. I saw a turtle crossing the road. What? B. 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 Does B ever stand alone? No. no. Is there any other letter that stands alone? Sometimes in cartoons. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, but I mean, I, I'm trying to think if there's any other time in the American alphabet that the letter stands alone. But they are words and letters both, right? So you're familiar with that concept. True? Right. So this is a new letter for tonight. I don't know if you cheat on this actually is. To, there's a couple of really good. Okay. The letter's name is K. What is it? K. A T Y. K. This is the best one. You'll hear me say it a thousand times. Hey, there's a whole lot there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Forget it now. It's also the same letter as you can touch your grandma's and just look it up. So you learned last week, yeah. That's a name of a. Oh, yeah. You certainly will. Thank you. Great. Yes. Very good. Y'all can get home when I can say that. I don't know. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there is another letter. I'm not going to show you right now that doesn't have a whole lot there. So as we're practicing, those of you that are just joining us, this is a new letter tonight. Okay. We're doing lesson four. Okay. This letter is called K. Hey. Going by our standard technique, what sound is hey gonna make? Uh -huh. The ha. But Correct. Okay. When we draw it, it looks a little bit like what other letter that you know? The top. The top. What's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. And when we talk about you about, you've got to pay attention. And the whole. But hey, there's a whole other letter. <laughs> right? Oh, so draw it again because what you what you've drawn is a different letter. So you're just ahead of the game. You are ahead of the class. <laughs> okay. All right. So the other concept that we're introducing is that a hey can be put at the front of a word and be another word. Now that's different from English. In English, we have some letters that stand alone. It's a letter by itself, and it means something, an individual thing, a turtle across the road, okay? Or, <coughs> I am going to watch the turtle cross the road before I go get my ice cream, whatever, <laughs> okay? But in Hebrew, we attach those articles, and there will be some other ones that are prepositions, then we attach it to all the other letters in the word. It's just the beginning. Okay? Don't worry about it. Just telling you it happens. Okay? So hey is one new letter tonight. The other new letter is a little bit tricky. You were waiting for a tricky one, weren't you? Okay. Watch how I draw it. It's almost like a backward Z, but the little cockeye. However you want to say it. Whatever makes you remember it. 
Okay? You'll notice in your book it's very decorative. Yeah. <coughs> and you'll see lots of decorative ones of these. But, yes. There's like a nose with a hair on it. Okay, that <laughs> This doesn't have to be skinny. It could be just as thick. You might see it curved round. I generally do it straight. This might be longer sometimes. Remember, we see a lot of handwriting changes, you know. And its name is Zadi. 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 Maserati, no, ma, 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 no, wait a minute, there's another one. Mazza. Mazzarelli. Mazzarella. Mazzarella. Um, there are, okay. There are words that sound with that T-Z sound. Um, fly. A zi fly. Zit zit from a man's undershirt that is his talit, his closeness to God. The knots tied in it remind him of God's commandments to him. Okay, so zit zit. Um, they uh, where? Uh, let's see. Um, where shall I sit? <laughs> <laughs> sit back. Mitsubishi. That's the one I was trying to think of. Mitsubishi. Cats. T S together. Cats. Your tongue can do it. Itsy bitsy. Okay. You can make a T Z sound or a T S sound. You can do it. But when you're reading in Hebrew, you might have to stop and think. Okay, so let's try to make a top. So it's not zop. It's It's a blended letter. So think zop. Say Ready? Spell it like this also, so you remember it. Top. Okay? It was a you know, it's still that sound, but it's like the E. But that's a, a whole word. It's that's a whole different Okay. Okay? okay. okay. Alright. So we're just trying to hear the sound. Where shall I sit? I don't care about where I shop. Any of that. I'm just trying to get you to hear the T Z sound or T S sound. In, a, in English, we don't have any TZ sounds that are really TZ, but in Russian, we do, don't we? Tsar. Tsar. Now, we come along with Scrabble and we say it's okay if you spell it like this. So it gets a Tsar sound. But, you know, that was just cheating. <laughs> Unless it's my 53 points, then it's okay. Bar okay. Mitzvah. Do a mitzvah. Get that TZ sound. Mitzvah. Okay? Alright? So, this week your ear may hear a whole lot of because you weren't thinking about that before. Okay? But now you are. Okay? Alright. So, also. We are not going to learn any other nouns or any other letters tonight, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> so, no extra vowel to also put in your brain and burden down, okay? But, two letters that are important. What's this one? Okay. 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 Okay
and sound as they make. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay. And what's the verbal clue for it? Oh, hey, hey. Poem there. Okay. What's this letter? Zadi. Zadi. And it makes the sound of saw. Like people. Saw. That's, I think, the easiest one for my tongue to do. Yours might say it's species. Easiest. Not me. Okay? <laughs> Betsy. So, Betsy, Bitsy, Bitsy, Betsy. And pizza. Okay? So, let's take a break and listen to Pam because she has some marvelous cool stuff for you. We're not going to spend a great deal of time on workbook pages this week because we're going to concentrate on our reading. So we're going to read a lot tonight after Pam's lesson, and then I'm going to leave you to do the workbook pages. So um, when, you're, when others are reading, look through the workbook pages, make sure that you understand what it's asking you to do. If you don't, let's clarify that, okay, because we're not going to spend a lot of time working on those this week, all right? Okay, so last week we learned about the um, menorah and, and, we, and the tetragrammaton. Mm -hmm. And um, some people came up and asked me what my resources were. One of the things that I really did a good intensive study on the menorah is um, is the creation. It's called it's a workbook, but it's not a workbook. It's just kind of kind of loosely. It's the Creation Gospel by Dr. Halissa Alvin, and um, it's excellent. And what it does is in this resource, it gives you a breakdown of all the sevens and how they relate to the, the menorah and when there's a copycat of the enemy it's also the it matches the, it's the direct opposite of the enemy's menorah so um so he lies steals copies cheats whatever so what you find in the father you also find copied and just and um uh, Distorted by the enemy. So this is a great resource. Then again, uh, the Creation Gospel and Dr. Holissa Outline. And I'll just leave it up here. You guys can come up. I'll leave it open, and you can come up and get that. So that's that's one of the early resources that I used when I started really learning about the menorah. It's very really deep, but um, um, it um, it's very very good, and it goes through a lot of um, the sevens. So that's really, since that is the key to all sevens in scripture. So, Jonah was talking about vowels. The vowel thing. Oh, gosh. And I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. you know, I really don't like it. This is the vowel thing that makes me very, very nervous. Because when I get it, I have to figure out which way it goes. And then I have to figure out, and I'm like right up here in this corner only. <laughs> that's all I've learned, though. Um, that that's just just so you know, the, um, the vowels are just horribly, horribly complicated. But in Israel, they don't put the vowels in letters because once you start learning the words, you know and you recognize the words. You don't need that. So I wanted to, I wanted to talk a little bit about because what the two words that we're going to talk about, the Haggadah and the Matzah, go directly with the feast of Passover. And is there anybody here that's not familiar with the feast? Okay. There are seven feasts of the Lord. Um, and these are the seven feasts. These are commanded feasts in scripture. They were given in Leviticus 22 and um, they would be forever. In fact, it's mentioned in scripture that those who do not celebrate this feast in the thousand year millennium, well, their land will get no rain. Okay, so you either learn now, you learn later. So, um, and I sort of like to have my foot on the right path a little bit because I don't want to be standing there like, Ugh. so I, I sort of took my time in a few years and just learned about the feast. And I wrote them down for you because a lot of people don't understand the, the, um, the procession of the feast. The feasts themselves are the calendar of God. If you want to know what God's going to do, you have to look at his calendar. Okay? So the first one starts with Passover. 
And we know that Yeshua is our Passover lamb. And these three, the unleavened bread and the first fruits, right here, those come in one week in the spring. One week. They come all together. You, you celebrate Passover, and the next thing you know, while you're celebrating Passover in your dinner, you're not eating any leavening in your bread. And the, the lamb has been killed, so he is the first fruits. Okay? So that is the first week of, of feast for the year. 50 days later comes the Feast of Shavuot. And it usually comes late spring, very early summer. And Shavuot, uh, you count the 50 days from the first fruits. Um, Jerry? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. What's Jerry? Huh? Really? Okay. Uh, the, the, some people, there's a debate on which day you start the first fruit or start counting. Jerry's got a, a theory on that, so you, you have to look at scripture, but um, 50 days later, you have Shavuot. The only thing you're supposed to do with Shavuot is count. Count seven weeks. And on the 50th day, you have Shavuot. You know it in Christian circles as the day of Pentecost. Okay, it's also the anniversary of the day that the law was given to Moses on Sinai. Yeah. So the word was given, the written word was given, and the living word was given. Okay? So that's pretty awesome in my book. And then we have a break for the summer. And then we have what's mirrored in the spring. We have three feasts in the fall that come very quickly. And it's called the High Holy Days. And we have the Feast of Trumpets. The trumpets only played to announce a king or a battle or celebration. So all these feasts have been fulfilled right here. The next one to be fulfilled in modern times is this one, the Feast of Trumpets. Okay. After trumpets, we, 10 days, we have a day of repentance. And we come to the day of Yom Kippur. It's the day of judgment. It's the day of covering. You get a kippah, a covering. Kippah is a covering. And Yeshua is our covering. And we are judged. So the day of judgment is Yom Kippur. And we fast that day. It says to afflict your souls. And in normal Hebraic terms, afflicting the soul is usually fasting. Okay? And then right after Yom Kippur, we go into the Feast of uh, Tabernacles, which is Sukkot, which is huge celebration. We build our sukkahs and we, we do all this different thing. And we just finish that. So um, Hanukkah and Purim are two extra holidays. Okay? They're not commanded feasts, but they're holidays. Hanukkah is the day of dedication. Yeshua actually celebrated that. He was in the temple on dedication, on the Feast of Dedication. Purim, at the end of the Book of Esther, Book of Esther is read, it is said to tell the story. So usually on Purim, they read the story, the Book of Esther. Okay? But those are holidays. And they're pretty significant holidays because a lot of things happen in Jewish history and Hebrew history for those. Now these were given, all of these feasts were given in Leviticus 23. And they were given to whom? Who were they given to? Moses. Moses. But they were also given to what? The Jewish people. They were given to the Israelites, mm -hmm. okay, and the mixed multitude. Yeah. There were not just Israelites at the bottom of the mountain. There were not, um, there were pagan people that came out of Ur of the Chaldees with Abraham, go check it, his servants, and everything. And there was not just Hebrews at the bottom of that mountain. There was a mixed multitude, and everything that was given was given to a, the Israelites and the mixed multitude. And the soldier with you. Okay? So, um, if you're not an Israelite by birth, you're a sojourner with them. Amen. 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 All right. So, these, all these are, are encompass a word called moed. Does anybody know what moed means? Okay. It's appointed time. But it's also, moed means an appointment. It is, it is understood in Hebraic culture that during the feast days, 
the Lord descends <coughs> and meets his people for an appointment. And they are holy days. Okay? So uh, the Moed, the Moed, the Moedim are the feasts of the year. They're two times. They live forever. You want to find out what happened to the Moedim? These disappeared a little bit from the early Christian church. They were celebrated by all the disciples. They were celebrated by all the early church. Moed, M-O-E-D. And I'll, I'll put it in Hebrew here in just a minute. This was written about 300 AD. It's called Constantine's Creed. I'm going to, I'm going to read this to you so you can find out what happened to these and why the church does not celebrate these. As a preliminary to his acceptance as catechism, a Jew must confess and denounce verbally the whole of Hebrew people, forthwith declare that with a whole heart and sincere faith he desires to be received among the Christians, then he must renounce openly in the church all Jewish superstition. The priest saying, and he or his sponsor, if he is a child, replying in these words. I renounce all customs, rites, legalisms, unleavened breads, and sacrifices of the lambs of the Hebrews. All of the other feasts of the Hebrews, sacrifices, prayers, aspirations, purifications, sanctifications, propitiations, and fasts, and new moons, and Sabbaths, and superstitions, and hymns, and chants and observances of the synagogues and of the food and drink of the Hebrews in one word. I now renounce absolutely everything Jewish, every law abiding custom, and if afterwards I shall wish to deny and return to Jewish superstition, or shall be found eating with the Jews or feasting with them, or secretly conversing with them and condemning the Christian religion instead of openly confuting them and condemning their vain faith, then let the trembling of Cain and the leprosy of Gehazi cleave to me as well as the legal punishments to which I acknowledge myself liable. And may my soul be set down with Satan and the devils. Furthermore, I accept all customs, rights, legalisms, and feasts of the Romans. Right. Sacrifices, prayers, purifications with water, sanctifications by Pontius Maximus, Who's, where did he get his authority? Propitiations and feasts, the new Sabbath, the soul D, the Sunday, all new chants and observances, all foods and drinks of the Romans, and the new Roman religion. That's what happened to you in Malay. That's what happened to the Sabbath. That's what happened to the Sabbath. The Sabbath was marked in the wilderness every single week. They were to gather the bread, the manna, and on the day before Sabbath, they were to get a, a extra, an extra portion so they would have it for the Sabbath day. For 40 years in the desert, the Sabbath was warmed. Messiah kept his Sabbath every week, every seventh day, seventh day, and as the Jews were diasporaed all over the world, when they all came back, they all agreed what the seventh day was, and they kept the Sabbath. Okay? So, those things are really important. So if you really, 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 really want to mess up all your friends and neighbors, <laughs> say, I'm going back to the original, the Moed, the Moed and, and you'll, I promise you, you will mess up all your friends and neighbors. Because my kids are all messed up. Some of them will still like you, but it'll be a question in their mind <laughs> if they can deal with you anymore. <laughs> Oh, she's really gone over the deep end? Yes, absolutely. She's really gone over the deep end this time. How come they didn't revolt against that? I do a separate thing. How come they didn't revolt against that? Their lives were at stake. What happened to Russia? They shouldn't Shana? revolt against the emperor. Russia Shana? Like, Russia Shana is trumpets. That's like, just, Russia Shana is trumpets. It's the trumpets. Uh, trumpet and Yom Kippur Russia Shana, or Russia Russia Shana or, or under trumpets? No, no, no. Trumpets? which is Rosh Hashanah, 
Then Yanka or Oh, I was just saying I missed that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Do you, what was that that you read from? What was the the, uh, the uh, It's Constantine's Creed. Okay, that's all I need to know. Okay. It's 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 in this um and but you can look that up online. That's that's that that you can find online. That upsets everybody's apple cart. And that's what sometimes it does. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's and sometimes people that are jerks are very sincere, yeah. and they don't mean to be jerks, and they don't mean to rip other people's holidays apart. Other people are absolutely intended on ripping others apart and destroying their religion, and they never succeed. They, that, that's one reason why, in my life, I'm not out to stop Islam. I'm not going to have Islam in my life, but I'm not going to try to kill every Islamic individual that I meet in the grocery store or in the school. It's not my goal. My goal is to be a peaceful person in worship to God and do what he calls me to do when he calls me to do it. I'll do the same thing with a Baptist. I'll do the same thing with a Jew. I'll do the same thing with an unbeliever. Yeah. So God doesn't call us to kill everybody. That's man's response. Crusade! Let's go kill him! Mm -hmm. so, so, so these are called Boed or Moedi. Boed or Moedi. Um, did you say about Eve being a plural word yet? Uh, no. Do it. Do it. So the, the, the man at the end of a word is like an S at the oh. end of our word. Oh, 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 or oh, 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 <laughs> you haven't met this shape of a man yet. Don't worry about it. Is it N? It's the final man. Team. Final man. Team. Has to have a good. But you, this word. When you see you and them, that's the plural. So, so the strong number for Moe. I'm not going to give you the plural on it, but the strong number is 4150, and it literally means an appointment, and that's where. The Hebraic understanding is they have a appointment with God. When I was married to my husband before he passed away, um, I would tell this, and it's a great way to explain it. If my husband was had a conference in Texas, and he um, called me and said, Pam, I want you to meet me at Disney World, at the castle, Sunday night, 6 o'clock. Be there. Get on the plane. I've got a plane for you. I've got time, date, here's a flight number. Take this plane and you'll get there and meet me at the castle at 6 o'clock. But knowing me, I decide I want to go and I want to drive. She has to get her nails done first. I have to get my nails done and I have to go down to the, the Claxton Fruitcake Factory and I have to stop and get oranges at the orchards and I have to. He likes oranges. And I, 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 I really just really want to stop in Savannah and get some bikinis and do all that. So by the time I get to Florida, I get there Monday night at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. And he has shown up at Sunday night at six o'clock. He's not happy with me. <laughs> He's not happy with me. We're still married, but there's trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's exactly what this is. That's exactly what this is. It's an appointed time. It's a and it's time. interesting that to this day, we can read in the scripture, what the appointed time is. We're told which day of the month. Even though the months have gotten polluted by Babylonian names, so there's no point in memorizing all the names of the Hebrew months because they've been changed into Babylonian words. Um, so don't worry about all those names of Hebrew months except to kind of have an idea because the Hebrews called them the first month, and the second month, and the third month, they made it a whole lot easier, you know? So in the seventh month, on the 14th day, you're to do this, God said. And if you look in your scriptures as you're reading, if you go back and read some, Leviticus is a great place to catch a lot of those. But the more you're familiar with that concept, the more you'll see that on this month, on this day, do this. Oh, I'll bet you men on this month, on that day, I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> the names of the months are good for crossword puzzles. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So one of your words this week is matzah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. 
Hans, when it comes to the feasts and, and everything in the year, so the new year starts, what, an hour September? Sure, no? Or no. Or does it start? Thank you. The garden beer. <laughs> it, it starts two weeks before, usually two weeks before Passover at the the uh, the beef barley. Does anybody know what when the barley is in a beef, what that means? Okay, there's actually a patch of barley up on go beef barley. <laughs> a, Jared, beef, Jared. A, beef, a beef barley. A beef barley um, is when the, the, they actually grow <coughs> barley up on by the Temple Mount, Jared. and they have a priest chuck it, and it's um, if it's ripe, if it's in a beef, if it's ripe. Now barley when it and wheat and grain, when it's picked, it's brown. If you're a farmer, you know that. So it's an agri agrarian cycle. It's, a, it's, it's an agrarian culture. So the barley is in a beef. You count from that to Passover. Jared, is it the, the moon that we count from, the first moon, or of the beef barley, or? When the, when the barley is at a certain stage of ripeness, what they do is then they'll start watching for the new moon because to begin the month, you have to have two witnesses that's to, that observe the new moon. So when that barley is in a certain stage of ripeness, and they're, they're looking at the moon, sometimes it gets a little tricky, and they're still arguing over this in different groups and different aspects today. I don't know if I like how that looks. Exactly. I have 10 people pinned on the with you. You've got, you've got, you've got, you've got the people at the New Moon, Israel the New Moon Society, and sometimes. I don't know if I agree with them. Exactly. And, and they stand there and they will argue over these things. But that's a good thing because what they're trying to do is get it right. Exactly. What if it's cloudy and we can't see them? They have to wait. Then it's deferred for a day. Let me check it again tomorrow. A month is either 29 or 30 days. It just depends. Yeah. So it starts the spring with the beef barley. In fact, that month is called the beef barley. And, and remember I showed you about the dates and the dates? She's saying a V, but it's spelled like this. It's a bait with no dot. A V. Cool. A V. So, so Tel Aviv, the city of Aviv. Yeah. Okay. He's stuck. Oh, it all hooks together. They have subtle colors. They're all not like the uh, Rosh Hashanah, the first one, the head of the year. The Rosh Hashanah is considered the head of the like the financial part of the year. It's rabbinical. It's rabbinical, not scriptural. Yeah. So it's good to know it, it's useful, but it's not scriptural. So, well, I think is where it says that uh, the month of the week will be the beginning of the month for you, the beginning of the year for you, right? So you, and you spot the new moon, and then you count 14 days till Passover. And this is really important, especially as we go into end times. Because we are we have the, the four feasts that have been fulfilled, Shavuot, the giving of the, the Holy Spirit, and the giving of the Word, um, Gum of Bread, First Fruit, and Passover. Um, those, those feasts have been fulfilled biblically. Do you want a wide one? Okay. They can't see in the back. Do you want a wide one? The band told you what Moedim was, it's plural of Moa, Moed. Moed. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, if you would say Moedim, it's mine. And in Leviticus 23, what does it say? My feasts. These are my feasts. He never relinquishes ownership of his feasts. And the Hebrew concept here. It's not that it's just an appointed time, but like Pam was explaining, her husband said, I want you here at this time. The Almighty is saying, these are mine. Like the I'm going to be there, and I expect you to be there too. It's, we're not penciled in to his schedule. You're a marker, Dave. Sharpie. Sharpie with a red one. And, and I'd say this one case being tattooed. And the thing is, <laughs> when you go back to Genesis, if you read Genesis very carefully, he sets the sun, the moon, and the stars for dates, right? Mm -hmm. For his seasons, his Moedim. 
his appointed times before Adam was created. Uh oh. Now he, you've gone meta. He knew, <laughs> the Almighty knew his plan before he created Adam. Yeah. Do you that, think that's that a good one for, for people that sometimes say, oh, these things are man created and somebody, you know. That's most a good most point that you many people that, will call them the Jewish holidays, yes, the yeah. Jewish feasts. Yes, if we could convey one thing among ourselves and call them God's feasts yeah. and mm -hmm. God's appointed times, we would do our parents a big benefit. Because it's not the Jews that came up with this. No. It's the Almighty who came up with this. Now, the, uh, the, uh, the reason they call it the Jewish feast, it comes out of uh, John's Gospel, where he talks about you know the feast of the Jews. And people kind of got that in their mind. But if you read that very carefully, you're going to find out that what John's saying is he actually uses that in a negative connotation. He, he's, what he's saying is... You know, that's just a piece of the Jews. That's just them. And he's a Jewish man saying that. So you, you get the... Uh, it, it's all... What they call it Hebrew is, is Hebrewisms. Yeah. yeah. It's like when God made Adam man, he made him from what? Adam on dirt. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I haven't learned that word yet. Okay. So we did just did. Oh. <laughs> By the way, Jerry's got two books out. I'm just putting a plug in. You, you want to learn some more stuff, Jerry? Yeah. Jerry knows some stuff. Yeah, Jerry knows I think I might want to read some of Jerry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, if you, so, do you have some at the house? Do you want them? If you want, he could bring some. I can bring some. If you want to. So, so um, this word is, is one of our new words. It's mata. And the commands for Passover, there's a lot of things with the Seder plate and all the celebrations. But there's just a couple commands, really, for Passover. The command for Passover is to kill the lamb, eat the lamb in haste with a stick in your hand, like you're you're going, like you you're ready to go with a coat on and you're ready to go. And to tell your children, to tell their children, well, to tell their children part. for all generations what the Lord has done for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So matzah, because it's unleavened, and they didn't have time to put leavening in, they had this whole thing of Passover happened, lickety split. So they didn't have time to let the bread rise. So um, the bread was unleavened, it was poked and striped, and we, we see that in the, the Passover Seder. But the Passover Seder is a tradition of men it's not commanded in scripture, but it helps to tell the story to your children, and to their children, and to their children, and to their children. That's the purpose of the Seder. So you can celebrate Passover in your home by telling your children the story of what the Lord did at this time, how he saved them from, from the Egyptians. So, Baza, if you want to break it down into the paleo, the man is mighty, water, or chaos. The zai is the journey and the chase. And the hay is the hold. So the, the, the water chase, the water journey, the mighty journey, you can plug that in there, but it still comes out the same. It describes the journey into the wilderness perfectly. So that's matzah. Okay. Any questions? Is that, you got the word moed up there, so is it matzah? Is it, watch, I, I didn't take that off, but it's matzah. Does everybody know what matzah is? Yes. 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 Okay. It's the cracker. It's the cracker. Okay. So really, really it's just good with chocolate and caramel. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm not so excited with the horse ride. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the other uh, the other word that we have. Do we have time for one more word? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Bob's gonna do it too, so yeah, do it and pay the Okay. So. 
So, I just took down all your notes. So, the next word that I have is Haggadah. Haggadah, Haggadah. The hey at the beginning of the word means the. The gada telling, the telling. So when you pick up the book for the Seder plate, you are telling the story. That's what it means. So let's let's paleo this out. Paleo it out. Let's paleo it out. This, this, these letters here are the telling, are telling, okay? And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And this is the word the. Remember how I said sometimes the word, a, a letter can be a standard word, a standalone word? This is the word the. So in this case, it's a ha, gada. But most of us go around pronouncing it ha, But it's really a ha, gada. It's not a just, it's, it is a turtle, but we say it's the turtle. It's the boy. We, we put in thes that we don't think about, too. And the way you can know that you do that is because when you listen to somebody from England, they say, have you been in hospital? Yeah, have you been in hospital? Yeah, have you been in hospital? They don't say the. It, they leave it off and we think they sound interesting and funny and different because we automatically put a the in. So this word is all, almost always people put a the with it because it's the telling of the story. Yeah. So the Haggadah, even though the Seder plate, it goes with the Seder plate, the Haggadah is the story of the telling. It's the telling. It means to tell the story. Okay? Fulfilling the commandment to tell your children, to tell your children for all generations. Okay? I the Lord that God I do not change. For all generations. So, um, the whole, the foot, through the door, behold. So, um, I still haven't sort of pulled that apart yet, but you can take your own meaning from that if you want to. But the Haggadah itself means the telling. It means the telling of the story of the Exodus. Well, in the Exodus, their feet went through the door. They went out of the place that they lived. They went out into a new place, and they were amazed at what happened. So that's how I think of it. It is a behold, I mean, isn't that also, doesn't it also mean praise? Yes. So, you know, it could be like... I imagine that night there wasn't a whole lot of praising going on, because well, no, there's a lot of praise. mystery and, and fear and concern. I mean, everybody, a whole lot of people were dead, and they hopped up and left. But, what an amazing thing 911 was. Horrible? Yes. 911, sorry. It's okay. Horrible? Yes. Behold, it changed our lives. Yeah. Behold. Behold doesn't always mean, oh, presents. It can mean like, oh. You know? Behold the majesty. Behold the majesty of God, right? It's not a, oh, hi. When, when we were in Egypt, we went over to um, our van, or a bus took us to Nueva Beach. And through New Wave Beach. That was Where at the actual <laughs> crossing, it wasn't at the Suez, it was at New Wave Beach. And there is a wadi there that opens up onto the beach. And it's enough for about a million and a half people. It's about a five mile stretch of land right on the beach. And on the side of the road is a, is a pillar. Those who want to see it, I've got pictures of a pillar that Solomon built to commemorate the crossing. There's one on the Saudi side. But they took it down. But they took it down, except for, you can still see the base. It was bothering them. So, um, um, so the journey of having the pillar of fire in front, in front of them, as it gave light, but to the Egyptians, it, it made darkness. Okay, so um, 
the fear of that and, and the trusting that they had to have in the creator is, is you know, they, they really just didn't have a choice at that moment in time. You know, their, their, their faith and their walk through that desert literally were um, just by the, the little ounce of faith that they had. So, um, and we think, oh my goodness, don't you understand? But we, we have hindsight, and they do. Right. So, um, and we have years and years and years and years and years of training to think about it in a Western mindset from a American Christian perspective. We have been taught and trained diligently to learn something different and have to open our thinking up and say, could God have maybe not meant American Christianity when he said these things? Could he have meant something different? And by learning some paleo, we start to pick it apart and see what other aspects. And when we found the uh, down in the cave in the 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 the, the, Wadi the Wadi al Hole, when we found that, and we found other ancient writings, and we can start to put things together, we start to get excited because we find truths that we didn't know about before, and we go. That's why that resonates with me. That's exciting. That's that makes more sense than December twenty fifth is Jesus' birthday because I said so. Okay, his name wasn't Jesus. <laughs> you know, but you can only take it so far because some people are ready to hear something. I wasn't ready to hear certain things at certain times. But then I got more ready. And every time I get ready, he feeds me more stuff. So if we say something that upsets your apple cart, it's okay. It's okay. We'll help you pick up the apples. <laughs> you know, we're not here to upset your apple cart. We're here to it's, say it's a journey that God's been teaching us cool stuff. Yeah. It's a journey that we're on. We're all on this journey. We're also journeys. So if I spill your apple cart, you'll help me pick up the apple. I am part of this really good. Yeah, yeah, okay. I am so journey too. So when we look at the words in Hebrew, we have a hey. Sorry, are you done? I am done. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> the hey might be part of the word. And it might be the word the at the beginning. Don't worry about it. Okay? But if you see it out there, sometimes you might even see a double letter. That might be a clue. If you see a, a hey and then another hey, that might be a real clue that that's a pronoun out of the front um, or a prepositional word. We're going to see a number of other Hebrew letters that function as prepositional words later on. Okay? So the hey is the first one that we meet. Okay? And this is a gimel with an ah. So we have ha, ga, da. No vowel. So there's a hey there, but herbs, herbs, hospital. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. There are places in your language vocabulary that you put an H that you don't sound out either. Okay. Um, hallelujah. Is there an H on the end sometimes? Yeah. Some people spell it Judah. <coughs> Judah. So you, you're familiar with this concept. Now you need it in Hebrew. Okay. So when we pronounce it, we have Haggadah. But this is called a root word. It's fine. Okay. It's not going to be a big deal, but almost always every Hebrew word can go down to a root word. Supergallifragilisticexpialidocious is a fake word. Yes. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Carol's going to sing it with me. Um, it's just made up of chunks, right? So if I tell you that the longest word in the English language is super ultra microscopic silico volcanic coniosis, you'll be impressed at my medical knowledge. <laughs> and because I learned that word, but it's medical, so I love it. But it goes little chunks that mean separate things. Okay? So in Hebrew, you get a, a root word that you can then put prefixes and suffixes on, just like in American words. You can do that but you're more familiar with that. 
This is a cat. Are you catting around? <laughs> it has nothing to do with a cat, really, but you know, it's, you stuck, a, you stuck some uh, suffix on the end, and now it means something different. You've done that before. You don't let people mess you up. All you're doing is put the word the on the beginning at this point. How about this word? Let's sound it out. Let's use this technique. Ma. 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 Sa. Sa. On the end. Put it together. Ma. Sa. <coughs> what is matza? Black bread. Unrisen bread. Right? Okay. How about that one? Let's sound it out. Isha. 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 Would all the Ishas in the room please stand up? Anybody who's ever been an Isha, stand up. Maybe <laughs> 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 you know, maybe you don't. No. Ma is a daughter. Wow. If you've ever been an Isha or you're an Isha now, <laughs> see some people stand up. You didn't stand up? You stood up and sat back down? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't want to stand unless I know what I'm oh, doing. Don't stand up if you don't know. Stand up if you don't know. Stand up if you don't know. Because this is what I get. Oh, all right. Are you going to ever be in a shop? Or you are currently in a shop? Stand up. Stand up. Oh, yeah. Anybody got a yes again? And I didn't say sit down. That's right. I didn't say sit down. See any of the men standing up? Well, not a single one is brave enough to try and stand up. And sit. All the women are brave. I'm just saying, okay? yeah. but I'm not. Oh, uh, somebody just read your up? book. So now, um, do you like getting a buddy and going to your reading group, or do you like counting off? You like getting a buddy? I like a buddy. Okay, get a buddy. All right, Jerry. Do you want to see something really cool? Yeah, we want to see something really cool. Oh, yes. show us something cool, Jerry. Really, <laughs> Some dots away. He just took all our diacritical marks yeah. off. If you look in what's known as the Aleppo Codex, that's the word you're going to see. What is it? Isn't it? The Aleppo Codex. What does that mean? The Aleppo Codex is the oldest known Hebrew manuscript. Um, it is. You gave us 20 minutes. You were in that building that it was in, but you didn't see the. We got, well, we got to see the fake one. We got to see the fake one. It's like. Uh, <laughs> It, it's actually housed in uh, <coughs> book. That is, that's where we were. Yeah. Uh, where they, they keep they the out a sample in there. Yeah, day. where they keep the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. <coughs> so that's what you would see. Now Zechariah 14, I think it's Zechariah 14, has a really, really neat story in it. Actually, it's a lesson, it's not a story. <laughs> and what it is. You remember when Zechariah gets a vision and he sees the flying scroll, right? You don't think of the two scrolls together, think of a single scroll on one, so it looks like a paper towel holder, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it says there's a lead box in there with a woman yeah. in it, right? It doesn't make any sense. Why would you put a woman in a lead box and put her in a flying scroll? <laughs> She must have one evil person. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the word, I think it's Zechariah 14. The word Asha is fire. The word Isha is woman. 
If you put an evil fire in a, inside of a lead container and put it in a <coughs> bowl, what do you get? Uh, I think a missile. Probably. You get a nuclear weapon, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. What was Zachariah looking at? Uh, <laughs> I, there's a, I think there's enough information out now because of the way he give, he actually details the measurements of this thing. Is the same de is the same measurements as a Scud missile. What he's looking at, he's given a vision of a nuclear weapon, by me, and I'm not, and I'm not alone on that. When we're reading scripture, it might not be 14, it might be 4. Um, it's in Zechariah, trust me. We're all reading Zechariah, we go home tonight. The reason we have to be so, so critical nowadays, and especially go back to the pale <coughs> Is because we now have, well, in this case, about 26 or 2700 years more technology than what Zachariah was saying. Yeah. If we're looking at these things, we have to determine was this really an evil woman that they stuck in this flying thing, or was it an evil fire that they stuck in this flying thing? That's why we go back to the Hebrew, not just, not just Hebrew. But Pam's Hebrew, were you paleo it out, as she says? Paleo, paleo out, like, just for fun. Yeah. Just for fun. Just for fun. <laughs> so when you see these things, it's, it's not just one little aspect, because not only do we have uh, 26 or 2700 years of technology, but we've also got 26 or 2700 years of mistranslation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, but that, that's just really cool. And every time I see that word, that just pops into my brain. Okay. Okay. Missiles and wife. Same, oh. at the same moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shira, I'm not sure that's good. Yeah. Missile and wife yeah. pops into his brain at the same time. <laughs> it does. So the mighty one. Now the shin can mean two different, several different things. The shin on this can mean several different things. It can mean to bite, destroy, consume, or it can mean to nourish. In this case, when we're talking about a woman, a wife, the first, the powerful one that nourishes the whole. Okay. Or if you're talking about the stud missile. The first to destroy. Behold. The first to <laughs> no, no, destroy. What are they from? <laughs> <Jordan Bird? laughs> Does that make sense? So so the first to bite or destroy. If you think of your muffin, you bite it, but you actually destroy it too, don't you? Yeah. You still take it apart when you bite into it, but you also bite into learning a new thing. The, this, the, uh, one of the very early picture graphs of the shim looks actually like a breast. It means to nourish. Okay? So, um, for the sake of not using that, but for the sake of woman teeth. <laughs> but it, it could mean to nourish or to destroy. So there's two opposing. And again, when you're reading it in context, you know which one it's supposed to be. When you're talking about a wife, she's not destroying. Oh. No, she's not. No, she's not. <laughs> For your reading, I'll talk to her. <laughs> so, um, so you know in context. <clears throat> we want to do some reading. Okay. We want to break into small groups as small as we can. So I'm going to have um, Carol and Tina split up. Jerry.